Here's a video where I show you one way that I like to simplify radicals. I like it because I get to see everything that I'm doing and I feel a lot more comfortable with my answer when I simplify this way. So it starts with the radicand, what I have inside the radical. I want to break it up completely into its prime factors. For that I'm usually using a tree. And I might need a calculator at the side to just tr do a little trial and error with division if I have a number that's getting to be a little bit too large. But my approach for just doing it by hand or in my mind is see if this number is even, how many times can I divide by 2? And I'll just keep doing that over and over again until I get to an odd number. So I found a few 2's and I'm at 15. I can break that down in, into 3 and 5. So there are my prime factors of 120, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 5. So I'm going to rewrite this radical using the prime factors in place of the 120. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Okay, the next part is that I'm looking for factors that are in pairs. And the reason that I'm doing this is because, let's find a little space to the side here to show you this. There are some perfect squares that I know I can do. For example, square root of 9, I know that that's 3 because 3 times 3 gets me back to 9. And, oh, how about, what's another good one, 64. I know that the square root of 64 is 8 because 8 times 8 is 64. But if I rewrite these radicands as their prime factors, so the 9, I'll write that as 3 times 3. What I'm able to do is, if I see a pair of factors, I know that it can come outside of the radical if I write it just once. And that comes from that idea that the square root of 9 is 3 because it's made up of 3 times 3. If I look at the factors of, the, of this number and see something times itself, that is the number that should be written without the radical sign. That is the number squared that would equal 9. Um, how about 64? And I am going to go for all the prime factors of 64. So I'll make another tree here. Um, 64, that's 2 times 32. The 32 is 2 times 16. And then we get several of them. And I'm okay with trees that are this long because I, I prefer the method this much. So it might take a little bit of extra writing and get so many trees it looks like an orchard. That's a bad joke. But I'm okay with it because the method works for me. So I've got 6 2's as the prime factors of 64. Now I'm not saying you have to do it this way and definitely if you know that the square root of 64 is 8 you wouldn't want to write all these 2's out. Just illustrating a point. If I look for pairs I'll find there's a pair of 2's so I'll bring one 2 out of this radical. Another pair of 2's so I have a second 2 coming out and the third pair, so I found three pairs of twos, and what I have outside of the radical, two times two times two, it's, it's the eight we knew was the square root of 64. So I'm showing you a way that if we look at prime factors, factors that are in pairs we can bring out of the radical, and if we have a few we would just multiply all those outsiders together and get our answer. So back to this problem, radical 120, I went for the prime factors and now I'm looking for pairs of numbers and I've got a pair of twos bring that out of the radical one two remember if it's a pair inside the radical we're only gonna bring out one and the rest of those factors in the radical two times three times five they can't be paired up so those all need to stay inside the radical and they need to all be multiplied together two times three six times five thirty so there's our simplified answer. That square root of 120, when it's simplified, would be 2 times radical 30. Here's our next example. I'm going to use the same approach where I look at the radicand and I break everything up into all prime factors and write these variables with exponents in expanded form so that I can find the pairs. This is going to take a, a bit of time and a bit of writing, but it's a, a method that I know I can be very accurate with because I can see everything that's going on. 
and I'm sure that at times you might see some shortcuts, and I'll maybe point out a few as well. For the example, I'll break everything up as much as possible, though, just to show exactly what's going on. So I start with the coefficient. I've got 108, and I need to find the prime factors of 108. I come to the side for the factor tree. And I see it's even, so I will just start dividing by 2 as long as I can. There's an odd number, so I can do 3 times 9, and the 9 is 3 times 3. So for the coefficient 108, I've got 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. The sh one shortcut would be in finding the factors of 108 and knowing that what we're really after are pairs. So maybe you would have sp stopped at that 9 and, and said, I don't really need to break that down because I know square root of 9 I'll be able to bring out 1, 3. The quickest way would be knowing some multiplication tables pretty well, enough to know that 108 is 3 times 36. And that's the best because it was the quickest way to find a square, and it was the largest perfect square that is a factor of 108, and that 36, square root of 36, would equal 6. We'll see that 6 show up later on in this problem. But let's move on to the variables. We have x squared, and I'll go ahead and write it in expanded form, x times x. y to the third, y times y times y, and z to the fourth, I mean, I'm going there, four z's. And so at this point is when I'm looking for pairs of factors inside the radical. And you might say to yourself, if I'm looking for pairs, then I don't necessarily need to write out four z's. I can see that in four z's, we'll be able to find two pairs. So there's another area where you might choose to not write it out as much as possible. But there's something comforting, to, to me at least, about just seeing everything going on right there. All I need to do is see a pair of factors bring one out. So a pair of twos bringing out one, two, bring out one, three, a pair of x's, one x. We have a pair of y's with one y left over. And so the leftovers, if it can't get paired up, it needs to stay in the radical. One thing you might want to do, if you're using this method and doing a lot of writing, is as you skip over a single, just put a little arrow so you don't forget about them to finish this problem. Okay. Pair of z's, one z. Another pair. Okay, so we had lots of pairs where we could bring one out of the radical and a couple that need to stay in the radical. To finish writing our answer, all of these factors that we brought out of the radical need to be multiplied together. We have 6 with x, y, z squared and left over inside the radical, 3 and y. So there's our radical, 3y. There's our simplified answer. Didn't, t didn't take too much writing and too much time, and I feel pretty good about the answer. And the shortcut that I referred to up here where we found right away that 108 is 3 times 6, there's our perfect square 36, which we made into 1, 6 outside of the radical. There's that 1, 3 that didn't get paired up inside the radical. So a couple shortcuts, and I, of course, emphasize doing lots and lots of practice problems. And it's really through repetition that you become more comfortable and have a greater interest in using some of these shortcuts. And so take your time when necessary. Use some shortcuts if desired.